Hello Year 3 and Year 4, welcome back to English Lessons Live with me, Mr Phillips. I hope you had a lovely week last week. Um, sorry I couldn't be around making the videos, but we're back now and here for you to carry on doing some extra English work if you fancy doing it. So, we're going to carry on with some writing today. We've finished Wolves in the Walls. We've done that, we've parked it, thank you those people have sent that work in. It's lovely to read it. We're going to try something a little bit different today. We're going to do some um, more smaller writing tasks, just to work on a couple of different technique things, okay? So before we start off, let's do a spag warm-up. Oh, went too far. There we go, this is our spag warm-up for today. It says, draw a line to match each word to the correct suffix use each suffix only once. So we know that a suffix is a collection of letters that goes on to the end of the word to change the meaning. For example, happer, ha happy, and then lee, happily at the end. I don't know what happer is. <laughs> you can tell I've not done it for a week. My mind's all over the place. So what words have we got? We've got the words accomplish, we've got forgive, we've got joy, we've got fool. And then the suffixes we've got is full, meant, ish, and ness. So which of the root words on the left hand side joins to which of the suffixes on the right hand side? What I'd like you to do is to pause the video and write out for me the four completed words. Now I don't want you to write, for example, accomplish plus whatever the suffix is. I want you to try and write the completed word because sometimes you have to do something extra for the spelling. All right, so have a little go. Can you write for me the four words that you think can be created using those root words and these suffixes? Pause the video there, off you go. Have a little try at that. Okay, so you should now have four words written down ready to go. Let's have a little look. So the technique for this would be to try on the suffixes, just like you would try on a t-shirt or a jacket before you bought it. Yeah, you need to try the suffixes on. So we're going for accomplish. Let's try them all on and see how it sounds. So accomplish full. Never heard of that. Accomplishment. Oh, I know that. Accomplishment. You have a good accomplishment. You know, your swimming. Here's a swimming badge for your accomplishment. Hold on to that one. It could be that one. A clum, a cum, a cum, <laughs> I don't know, I can't read. Accomplish-ish, accomplish-ish, don't think it's that one. And accomplishness, accomplishness? He had good accomplishness. No, it doesn't sound right. The only one that links together is accomplishment. I have really struggled with accomplish-ish to say that out loud. <laughs> so you know it's not that one if you can barely say it. Accomplish. Mint. We know that one link. So well done if you got accomplishment written down as your first one. What about forgive? Forgiveful. Can you be forgiveful? I don't know. That sounds a bit odd. But it's not going to be meant, is it? Forgive-ish. And, and again, not quite right, quite right. Forgiveness. Ah, forgiveness sounds better than forgiveful, doesn't it? I've never really heard of forgiveful before, but forgiveness I've definitely heard of. So we would link together forgiveness to make forgiveness. Well done if you got that as your second one. We've only got full and ish. Now, uh, next we've got joy. So is it joyish or is it joyful? Is it foolish or is it full foolful? <laughs> well, joy obviously links to joyful and fool obviously links to foolish. So the four words that you should have is accomplishment, forgiveness, joyful, and foolish. Well done if you got those four words. Good job, well done to you. Okay, let's move on to our writing task. So, here's our writing task, go a little bit further down. Our writing task today is to write a character description using positive intent and we've got these five characters to pick from and you can pick whichever character you want it doesn't have to be the same character that i'm picking you can watch what i do and how i model the writing and you can use the same structures and things like that to influence your writing 
but you can have a completely different character. I'll keep trying to give you examples of how you can use the structures that I'm using um, with your characters. So we've got five characters to choose from. We've got a, uh, a very muscular unicorn. We've got an Albert Einstein-esque scientist. Uh, we've got a, a lady there who looks like she's leaning on a TV. Maybe she's a TV salesperson. Uh, we've got a very happy zombie and we have got um, a girl who's looking a little bit sad and blowing a, a bub piece of bubble gum. So these are your five different characters. And notice we want to use we want to write a character description using positive intent. So it's all going to be good description today. We're not trying to build a negative picture. We want to build a good picture. I've put these symbols on again to remind you of the nine different lenses for writing. When you're really stuck and you don't know what to write, it's going to be one of these nine choices. You're either going to do what you can smell or what the character can smell, what they can hear, what they can see, what they can touch, what they can taste, what they're thinking, what they're saying, what they're doing or how they're feeling. It's going to be one of those nine. So I've always put them there just so you can remember if ever you're feeling a little bit stuck. Okay. So first of all, I need to pick my character. Now, because we're doing positive intent, I might give myself a challenge. I might try this guy right here. I might try and do the zombie. And that's going to be a challenge because the zombie will be easy to do with negative intent because, you know, it's a decaying body and, um, you know, disgusting, rotten flesh. Um, but I want to see if I can describe him with a positive intent. You pick your character and let's go down here. So, when I'm doing descriptions like this, ooh, where have I gone? Oh, that's not for now, that's for next week. Not next week, in a couple of days. Don't know what happened there, sorry. Um, when we're doing these descriptions, it's really important that we understand what we're trying to say first and then we can build on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write three basic descriptions so I know what I'm doing, basically like a plan. So um, I'm going to describe his skin first. I think that is a quite a prominent feature. Um, so he has, oh it's red, fun, uh, he has green skin. Uh, my next one, I'm going to write, I might, because I'm talking about positive intent, I might write about his lovely smile. Uh, he had a lovely smile. And one last thing, those are both those are both seeing things. So I might do either a sound, a sight, or a touch. Which would be hard to make a positive smell or a positive sound or a positive <laughs> touch of a zombie. Definitely not going to do taste, because I can't imagine he would taste particularly nice. Um, I am going to do. What could we do for a positive positive smell now he's not going to smell particularly positive is he um, we'll, we'll do that positive touch no because he's gonna be all fleshy and maybe we could do a positive sound and use our imagination a little bit maybe he hums a really nice tune or goes along singing really happy songs that would be sound it would be still a description of the character but it would be positive he um, walks along singing joyful songs. I'm using one of our root words and suffixes there. Okay, so those are my three basic descriptions. He had green skin, he had a lovely smile, he walks along singing joyful songs. Now, I know there are some children there, probably in year five and six as well, who would write those three sentences and would say, Mr. Phillips, I'm done, I've written a character description. And those children will be promptly sent back to their places again because it's really simple it's too simple we need more detail don't we so let's start with the first sentence and try and build it up a little bit we'll put those ones down there okay so he had green skin right well what else is what else is green that's really positive well maybe we can compare it to like jewels and diamonds like emeralds yeah, and maybe we could say the skin, um, although he's dead, was, you know, smooth and um, well looked after. 
maybe he's very uh, uh, a zombie who's very very you know likes his appearance it must be well kept so rather than saying he had green skin uh, maybe we could say um now I'm not writing a story, so I don't need to. I don't need to link it together. I don't need to be saying one day there was a zombie who. I don't need any of that. These are all sentences that I could pick up and put in a story later on. Um, we could say his most notable feature, his most noticeable feature, was his emerald, emerald green skin. His most noticeable feature was his emerald green skin. A notable feature means the thing that you notice first about him, which I think is definitely one of the things that makes him stand out. Now, that sentence feels a little short. Maybe I could use a relative clause, a who, which, where, that on the end of that. His most notable feature was his emerald green skin, which, well, maybe if I'm comparing it to an emerald in the colour, what else could I um, say? Well, maybe because emeralds are jewels, maybe they're really, really smooth. So I could say his skin was really smooth as well. His most noticeable feature was his emerald green skin, which, just like the diamond... Um, oh, no, that's going to get too computer. I was going to say, I want to say just like an emerald, but then it's repetitive. Um, his most noticeable feature was his emerald green skin, which was smooth to the touch and extremely well cared for. Perfect. There we go. I like that, because that's what I was saying before, his very well kept skin. His most noticeable feature was his emerald green skin, which was smooth to the touch and extremely well cared for. Now, before I said, um, although he was dead, and I like that, because that's a little bit of a subordinate clause we could kind of insert in the middle for a bit of humour. Um, where could I insert that? His most notable feature was his emerald green skin, which, although he was dead, was smooth to the touch and extremely well careful. Yeah, I'm going to insert this subordinate clause. I want to say, um, although he was dead. That is the little bit of parenthesis. That's a bit of extra information that I want to squeeze in and embed it. And I want to embed it um, there. Just like that. Perfect. And I need to read it carefully, pausing where I put the commas to make sure it all makes sense. His most noticeable feature was his emerald green skin, which, although he was dead, was smooth to the touch and extremely well cared for. Perfect. That is quite a complicated sentence, that. There's a main clause and a relative clause and another embedded subordinate clause. That's really, really good. Now, what we need to try and do is not just describe each individual thing in one sentence. We want to try and get at least two sentences for each of these descriptive points. So what else can I... Now, I know I've actually done quite a lot of description about his skin there, but I want to try and make another sentence about his skin. That's there. Um, maybe there's... I can see some... Um, darker patches on his face um, almost like uh, may, may, uh, almost like the freckles of a young child because that's positive remember we're writing positive intent uh, descriptions that create happy images in our audience's head um, right so where are these dark splodges we're not gonna call them splodges because splodge instantly has a negative um, effect doesn't it splodge is like oh I spilled paint by accident that kind of thing uh, but there's across his cheeks, aren't they? So um, maybe because they scattered across his cheeks, rather than splodged. Splodged is quite negative. Scattered is nice and happy, isn't it? We scatter flowers around, things like that. So scattered across his, um, maybe, <laughs> maybe we could say um, dainty nose. So dainty is like small and delicate. Um, scattered across his dainty nose. Um, was a collection of um, um, darker, do I want to say darker green because I've said emerald green, maybe I can just say darker coloured freckles. Scattered across his dainty nose was a collection of darker coloured freckles. Ooh, I'm feeling that I could, I could really hammer down on like the sickly sweet 
um, description here. Um, scattered across his dainty nose was it because it was a collection of darker um, coloured freckles. What I want to not do actually is I don't want to have another relative clause because before we had our main clause and then a relative. I don't want to do another main clause and a relative. Maybe I do a non-finite with an ing instead. So scattered across his dainty nose was a collection of darker coloured freckles making, so it's an ing not a who which where, uh, making him look like a sweet young child. Scattered across his dainty nose was a collection of darker coloured freckles, making him look like a sweet young child. Yes, at least, uh, at least two sentences there, all describing his positive appearance. Okay, let's try another one. He had a lovely smile, right, how can I build that one up? Again, I don't necessarily want it to connect to this one, I just want it to be a standalone description. Um, well, if I can straight away, a broad smile is quite positive, isn't it? Um, why is it lovely? Maybe because his teeth um, are gleaming white. Are they gleaming white? Yes, they are gleaming white. We could describe his gleaming white cheeks. Um, so maybe, rather than focusing on the inside of his, uh, his lovely smile, um, we could talk about it just focusing on his, his teeth and just kind of throw in the fact that he had a lovely smile. So I could say, um, within his um, lovely smile were uh, um, two, per were two perfect, no, two rows of perfect, two rows of perfect teeth. Um, gl uh, ooh, which shimmered? No, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna go for an on fan out. Within his lovely smile were two rows of perfect teeth, shimmering and glinting in the sunlight. There we go. Perfect. And that one came to me really, really quickly then. So within his lovely smile is a little prepositional phrase to tell me where I'd find them. And obviously I threw in lovely to make it really positive. With two rows of perfect teeth. And two rows of perfect teeth is a phrase that I've heard before from other authors. So I guess stole that and I used it for my writing. Shimmering and glinting in the sunlight. There's a non-finite clause, a description that starts with an ing word. There we go. Now I want to add another thing about his smile. Um, potentially, I could do a, a smell about his breath. Yes, that would be a positive smell. Um, if I'm going to go for a subordinate clause starter, if if you got if you got close enough, you would smell um, a fresh minty um, aroma aroma, which is kind of like a, a smell that's wafting around. If you got close enough, you would smell a fresh minty aroma um, coming from his mouth which was um which was create um which was thanks to to his strict dental routine <laughs> there you go again one of these ones that just kind of came from my head then if you got close enough you would smell a fresh minty aroma coming from his mouth which was thanks to his strict dental routine there we go so that one's another really complicatedly complicatedly um, another sentence that's constructed in a really complicated way so we've got a subordinate clause to begin with if you got close enough we've got the main clause here uh, you would smell a, f uh, a fresh minty aroma we've got a prepositional phrase there or uh, um, coming from his mouth um, actually that's not a prepositional phrase that's a non-finite clause actually because it's the ing and then you've got a relative clause at the end Whew, and all those different levels means we've constructed a really complicated sentence. Okay, and that's his, he had a lovely smile. That's that one's done. Okay, um, I might have time to do the last one. I quickly want to show you how you can use these structures with a different character. Let's pick a random character. Um, let's do that rainbow unicorn. Let's do him. So, um, 
let's look at this one. His most so I could use his most notable feature was his uh, multicolored mane, which um, although he was um, quite a tough unicorn, flowed down his hair. So flowed down his back, um, like a wave, like a wave crashing over um, a beach. There you go. <laughs> See these ones just trying to come up with them off the top of my head. I'm trying to use the same, uh, you know, vague structures. Um, rather than scattered across his dainty nose, we could say placed just above his um, bright eyes were two thick eyebrows which framed his beautiful face perfectly. There you go. So you just try and think of all the little details and try and construct them together, okay? This is quite difficult description, especially because I'm asking you to try and do um, a couple of sentences per item. I don't want you just to be saying things like, um, he has emerald green skin, um, on his nose he has freckles, his teeth were perfect and they smelled of mint. You know, it's too short, it's not detailed enough. I'll tell you what, I won't do this one for now. We'll just focus on those two, okay? So all I'm trying to ask you to do is pick out for a character two features that you would like to describe about any of the character. But for each feature, make sure there's more than one thing that you think you can talk about. For example, if you take this character, if you can talk about his hair, okay, I can talk about the fact that it's white, I can talk about the fact that it's bushy, I can talk about the fact that it drops down below his ears. Make sure you've got a couple of different things that you can talk about, okay? But when you're constructing it together, try to avoid saying he had white, bushy hair which came down to his ear. That's great for one sentence, but then you've got nothing else to say after that. So it's about trying to take the description that you've got and expand it and add extra detail and add figurative language like similes and look at how I've constructed some of these sentences and copy the construction of them, either the openers or how I've made them longer with relative clauses or how I've uh, embedded slightly longer subordinate clauses in the middle, okay? Really complicated, have a little go for me. Even if you only come up with one, yeah? See if you can do that and then I would love for you guys to email me some of the descriptions that you have done. Uh, I will see you all tomorrow where we're going to do another little bit of reading. Alright guys, see you later. Bye.